In this video, I'm turning your submitted drawings into realistic adaptations. Cute things, terrifying things, nothing is too crazy here. Fasten your seatbelts and then let's get straight into it. Textures and backgrounds and life that I must fetch. I'm feeling this vibe. Shadows and lights start to bring it alive. Yo, it's time to cut it up and I can't believe my eyes. This is what I call for your list of five. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while. Realistified, the show in which I turn your drawings into somewhat realism using Photoshop. If you want to send yours for the next episode, make sure to send them to realistified at bennyproductions.net, which is a new email address, so keep that in mind. And then let's just get straight into it. The first one was sent in by Savage Gamer. Hi Benny, I've got a drawing for you. It's creepy, he's called the Splacer Man. Thanks for your drawing, it looks haunting, which is exactly what we need on this glorious day. Let's get this train running. What a handsome young man. Let's get straight into it. First, I am going to drag in a skull because I think this is great for the base of uh, his skull. Let's make this a bit bigger and this is going to be a lot of warp once again. You guessed it. I'm just going to try and see how far we can get just by using warp. Now, this can go all the way back. There you go. And then here it's going inwards again. This looks absolutely ridiculous, but it is pretty accurate to the drawing. So let's just go and hit enter. And <laughs> there you go. Then let's erase the areas we don't need, which is a lot of it. Everything below his upper jaw is basically useless. Dum, da -dum, da -dum. I think something like this should be pretty good. Now all we have to do is replicate these same lines on our skull, which shouldn't be too hard. I'm just going to use some uh, shadows for that. And and a little bit on this side as well. For the eyes, I found this beautiful eyeball. Obviously, we don't need the blue area, so we gotta remove that. But let's just put it in there first. Something like this. Then let's make sure it fits within the eye socket. And then we should be all good. And hopefully this is going to work. There you go. Not perfect, but definitely good enough. This is looking incredibly weird. So let's go and add some shadows just a bit around it to give it some depth. Pretty sure this is going to look very, very disturbing. Yep, that's disturbing. Then we have to do that exact same thing for the other one. But of course, the shape is different. So we have to keep that in mind. This is going to be something. <laughs> They're not quite done yet, though. We have missed a key element. There it is. Let's see how realistic we can make this like that. I don't know what that did, but I guess it looks nice. So we'll just keep it. Then for the horns, I found a nose horn horn. No, I didn't actually say nose horn. Okay, now it is getting out of hand. Rhinoceros horn. Nose horn, give me a break. There you go. Exactly there. And then we just have to mask away the bottom. Something like this is what we need. So then it's just going to come down to uh, shadows again. We have to create some sort of nice bump. Yes, this is going to look nice. For now, this isn't even so bad. So then I have to copy this one and add it a few times again, because as you can see, he has four of them. So let's go ahead and do that very quick. Let's Last one and there you go. That's looking pretty good actually. I did change the position of some of them because it wasn't really accurate the way they were placed here but it still looks the same so it's fine. You know what I think? This one may just be perfect for the nose as well because as you can see it's pretty long but maybe we can just make it that long using our favorite tool warp yes 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 this may just work let's see sort of like this yes yes i'm pretty sure this can work and we just need some shadows down here whoop Perfect. Then let's see what we can do about the lower jaw. I am going to use the same image we used before, except the jaw area. And you guessed it, this is going to be a shit ton of warping again. Almost. And oh, that is fantastic. Fantastic. Now we just have to make it 3D again, which shouldn't be too hard for this, but still it's it's quite some work. For the inside of his mouth, I'm just going to go with a very simple black solid. There you go. Most of this is covered anyway, so you won't see half of it. This is starting to look so weird. Like, what the heck? You know what? For the teeth, we may as well use these as well. We, of course, have to change the color just a little bit, but apart from that, I'm pretty sure this 
would look perfect yes then once again i'm gonna have to warp these and uh, place these on the right spots yeah definitely a lot of fun <laughs> a bunch of shadows are in order of course you know it i'm just doing the same stuff over and over again it's it's incredible i still don't understand how this keeps being fun to watch for you guys and a bit of a highlight on this one as well and then there you go that is fabulous now guess what i'm gonna have to do the exact same thing once once again right about there It's just getting better and better. Though we still haven't done the most crucial thing, the tongue. I have this beautiful tongue, I'm gonna flip it and then simply put it on there and then we are completely finished. <laughs> if only. I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea how to make this look good, like this, this seems quite impossible. I guess I can just put this tongue image in here and the majority of editing is just gonna be shadows i guess honestly i don't know how else to do this this is what i'm talking about it looks it just looks weird but i guess we can still try and see uh, what happens if we add some shadows most of all some shadows around the edges will probably help a lot and towards the pointy end as well pretty sure this looks amazing <laughs> you know what sure it, it it's fine it's <laughs> <laughs> it is fine tiny bit of highlights here and there and then i think for the tongue we should just call this a day because it's not gonna get much better than this anyways beautiful absolutely extraordinary then we have to make uh, his neck and body because those are still absent i feel like it would look a lot better if this tooth is behind his tongue since the body is barely even on this drawing i am just gonna use this bust which of course is human but nobody cares nobody Cares. We'll probably be adding a lot of smoke around it anyway, so you can barely see any of it. Let's do uh, <laughs> something like this and put it all the way down here. And now the only thing we still need to fix is this tiny area. We may as well just use some skull parts again. I really am not so sure about this, guys. It's all looking just kind of weird, <laughs> especially when you zoom out like Let's try adding some final shadows, see if that helps. I don't really think it will, but you never know. Let's add a nice, juicy, filthy, disgusting texture near the eyes to make it look a bit more intense because I find it a bit too safe, you know what I mean? Look, that is better. You know what, I think this is pretty good as the base, so uh, that means that now it's time to add a background and an environment and cool lighting and cool stuff. So uh, yeah, let's just get into it, see what happens.
And there you have it, Displacer Man. Not someone I'd like to meet in person, to be honest. I'll make sure to send this back to you ASAP. Then the next drawing for today was sent in by Jeremy. Hi, thought you might like this and do something with it. If you're adding a background, may I suggest you do a jungle? Also, the driplet around his mouth is poison. Thanks. Thank you very much, this is something different from what I usually do. To keep it spooky, however, I'm gonna make the poison blood. Let's drop this into Photoshop and get started. This is going to be very cool. Pretty sure the head is a great place to start and I think this pumpkin will literally be perfect. Look at this. I felt like this pumpkin just had a very good texture for the head, so uh, why not use it then? Then let's hide it and make a mask for the mouth. It's gonna be very rough. I don't want it to be too smooth though, because that's gonna look just very artificial. And there we have a selection, then extract it from this one beautiful then let's make the inside black for now very nice then i'm going to add some quick shadows already just to give it a bit of shape <laughs> this is gonna look amazing using these teeth i'm gonna try and make his mouth it isn't going to be very accurate to the drawing because i found this a bit too chaotic but i'm pretty sure this will look fine as well like that see this is not so bad under this edge here i'm gonna add this tiny little shadow to uh, separate it from each other and more shadows what a surprise this better make it look amazing because it's not worth the effort otherwise i'm pretty sure shadows like these will also help quite a bit to make it look like the teeth are actually coming out of this well pumpkin but it's not gonna remain a pumpkin then maybe we can put the inside of a human's throat inside this for no reason at all and first let's take out some of the color and then make it a bit more dark and intense and erase some areas to make it fade out on the sides for example and there you go just nice and subtly it definitely shouldn't be too visible then i also had this tongue which i thought would be quite funny to add as well so let's simply just Put it right here and add some of these same shadows on it. However, on the front, this one is going to be a bit more visible than the rest. That actually looks pretty nice. So I'm thinking the plant is red. So let's go ahead and make the orange red. There you go. Something like this, I think is pretty cool. We already have the head. It looks a bit different. It's a bit more streamlined, if you will. But I think the overall thing will still look very, very similar. Guess what else I have? leaves these two i'm going to use to make all of these leaves behind him so let's just go ahead and put them in place and this is going to take quite some time i think especially because i also have to add shadows on literally all of them yep no this th this ain't fun pretty sure this is the last one of the first row yes it seems to be so now ladies and gentlemen this this is where actual hell starts this is going to come down to me adding shadows to every single freaking leaf let's let's just go let's just freaking go and not only the overall shadows but also the interaction shadows with other leaves which does not make it easier like this this is basically what i'm gonna have to do to every single one. Shoot me. Since I will be doing this for quite a while still, I will see you in one second. So I'm pretty sure this is the last one. Let's see. Something like this shouldn't be too bad because it's quite at the front. Yes. Yes, that's that's quite nice. Although the lighting on the pumpkin itself doesn't really make sense anymore. Let's try and do something about that. Basically, the closer it gets to the leaves, the darker it has to be. Especially because there's probably no light falling here in the first place. Then let's go and add a bit of a darker shadow right below it on the leaves to make it even darker on the edges. And then I'm pretty sure that looks quite nice. However, we don't have all the leaves yet. So let's add the final ones on the back and then continue from there. Maybe we can do with a tiny bit of a highlight on some of these leaves. Not too much, but just a little to give a bit of a more rounder shape to them. Then now we are going to make these stems. These guys with the thorns on it, we are going to use them to make these flubbery stems i think it's what it's called i'm not sure as you guys know my english vocabulary isn't all that wide but anyway we are going to use puppet warp because i feel like that's gonna save us a whole lot of time that is if you compare it to warp for example as you can see this is far easier and there you go this should be actually pretty good this must be one of the most powerful tools in photoshop honestly it doesn't even look bad like sure the lighting is a bit off but overall it looks 
pretty good. So now let's put it in place right about here, I'd say. And then we can put it below our plant. There you go. Fantastic. For some reason, this is also very satisfying to do. Like seeing it bend like that and it actually working the way you want it to, it's, it's oddly satisfying. Towards the end here, it's going to be difficult because it has to be very skinny, but I guess we can fix that later. For now, this definitely doesn't look so bad. I think I now have pretty much all of them. Now, once again, you, I'm not even going to say it anymore. What are we going to do? Adding shadows. Yes. I'm taking into consideration that the light is probably going to come from behind. I'm not sure, but probably. So it's mainly the bottom areas I'm making a bit darker. I really hope this is going to turn out the way I want it to. I think it would be nice if the thorns match the redness of his face. So uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just quickly going to go over the thorns just like this. Doesn't have to be so perfect at all. It's very simple. Then I almost forgot. There's also a bunch of tiny leaves on the stem stems right here and right here. So we do need to add those as well. Let's put this little one right here. I'm also going to curve them a little bit so it looks a bit uh, more natural, more random. Then it is some more shadows for hopefully one last time on leaves today. There is a lot of blood here, but uh, I think apart from that, we are pretty much all set except for the creases and uh, holes in the leaves. I'm just gonna grab a quick brush and draw on the places where there should be some holes. And then I can simply grab the eraser and make a nice hole here, just like so. Same thing on all the other ones. I feel like the leaves do look a bit too clean. So I'm gonna add some variety in color by adding some reddish tones on the outside of the leaves. It does help make it look a bit more dirty, I guess. Especially around the holes and cracks, it should be really, like, dead. Like, this plant has seen some action. Like I said earlier, we are going to need the blood stuff. So let's just grab this one and put it on multiply. As you can see, that looks pretty nasty. And then using some warp, we can kind of put it on here. And I think this is not even so bad. And this may as well just go down his chin all the way. Can you call this a chin? I don't think so. Of course, we also need some blood on the leaves only. Look at that. <laughs> on the drawing, however, it's mostly dripping down. So we should probably add a whole bunch of this stuff down here like this. And then there's a bunch of blood here dripping down just like this. Pretty sure the drawing had that too. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel that now we're at the point that the character itself or character... <laughs> Thing itself is pretty much done. So let's go ahead and see what this guy looks like in an environment. There you go. I think this turned out quite nice. I'll send this back to you when I get the chance. Then the last drawing for today was sent in by Vegeta. Hi there. I would like to ask if you could make my creation look real. Here's the picture. Hope you like it. I sure do. Perfect for this season as well. Let's run it one last time. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I must warn you, this one is going to be a little different than usual, I think. I have this beautiful chimpanzee and I'm gonna use his back for this guy's chest. Believe it or not, I'm gonna use some warp again. There you go. Something like this. And we don't need this arm or his head. Then we have to extend it a little downwards right until about here, I'm guessing. And once again, we don't need the side area. I also have this beautiful front view of the chimpanzee, so I'm gonna use the arm for this one. Let's go and erase everything but the arm. Then we have to put it on here somehow and it is a little bit too short so I think we're gonna need some warp again. Let's bring this hand all the way down here. The position of the hands and feet isn't gonna be super accurate but I don't think it really matters. It's more about the overall idea anyway. Let's make it connect very seamlessly by erasing this edge. It's not very seamlessly but we'll fix that later with shadows. Then the second arm on the left. Pretty sure it's the exact same here once again. I'm just gonna move the hand down, make it slightly bigger. There you go, that should be pretty good. Then once again, we're gonna erase this area and then we should be all good. Okay, so I guess that's his torso. That, uh, doesn't even look so bad, actually. You know what? We may as well use the arms for the legs as well. I'm sure nobody would notice, except for literally every single person watching this video right now but we won't speak of that will we besides we can make them actually look like legs by adding the right shadows on the right areas which i'm gonna do later the only boring thing is it's the exact same thing the whole time once again like you're used to actually they have to go a little bit further down though and i thought maybe just maybe i can use these cat paws to finish his feet because it kind of does have the same vibe doesn't it let's do something like this and then put it right about there Let's try some U and saturation maybe, make it a bit brownish. That's actually quite perfect. So then hopefully I can simply just copy it and drag it to the other side, just like so, as long as it's in the right position. It's a bit smaller than the original, but I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't see reason why not to just make his head using the chimpanzee again. Why do it the hard way when we can do it the easy way? Let's start right here. That's actually way too fluffy to be scary. <laughs> like that. I guess this looks a bit strange but like I said earlier we can fix this kind of stuff by adding shadows so let's go and not do that yet because we don't have the ears yet there you go very nice perfect this one is really 90% warp like it's just warp. I think it's going to get a bit too blurry this way, but maybe we can split it up into two parts. Maybe turning it into the right color helps. Anyway, now I'm pretty sure it's time for shadows because I can't stand it any longer. Let's make the background uh, light gray or something. I don't know. And then we can start adding some shadows. And I do want the light to be kind of generic, just coming from above, I guess. Look, now we're getting that shape in his face. There you go. That is what I was missing. And a bit under his eyes arms of course very good see how big of a difference that makes it's insane now let's give this guy some well-deserved eyes i'm pretty sure this is absolutely haunting however as you guys know it's always even more terrifying if there is no iris so uh well there you go first one we will put right about there and the second one right here and now we have to make it look like they're actually in there instead of just floating on top and i think we can do that by using some fur brushes like this that looks kind of weird but i guess it's fine we can always add some shadows on the eyes themselves see that makes it look a bit more realistic then of course we also have his mouth and i found this beautiful mouth his mouth is right about there i would say it, it wasn't very detailed in the first place so that means it's open to interpretation and i think this mouth will look freaking beautiful let's do something like this and then hide this one put this one on here and then we just have to do the same far effect, which I think will work fine for the teeth as well. There you go. Let's see how we can make this look a bit more believable. A bunch of shadows on these and that is looking absolutely haunting. What have I once again created? Wow. You guys must have been waiting for the hammer this whole time. I found this one, which I think looks pretty cool. Or maybe this one is better actually. Yeah, let's use this instead. It's a bit more similar to the drawing. Right, then here we have to put it in his hand somehow. Then we just have to extend the stick so it matches the drawing at least a little bit. And then I'm pretty sure we should be all good. I do want the end of this hammer to be metal and not rubber, so I'm hoping this might help. Then the only remaining thing we actually need are shadows. So let's go ahead 
and add those. Gotta make sure the lighting matches the rest. So let's add a shadow below the stick and then also a bit by his hand here. I actually really don't think this is such a bad attempt. It's not fantastic yet, but it's not finished either. There is one crucial thing missing. The drawing has a bunch of blood and a bunch of, uh, yeah, well, blood. So that's what we are going to need to add. I have a bunch of these blood images and if I put these on multiply it will instantly look like blood. So it's hard to see where exactly it all is but it seems to be all over. So let's just do it all over. And then possibly we can use some blend if to make it look a bit more convincing. There you go. This is going to do it ladies and gentlemen. So now that everything is pretty much in place I'm curious what this would look like in an environment. not the biggest fan of how this one turned out but I guess it's not horrible so I'll send this back to you ASAP. Then I guess those were the drawings for today. Let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite and if you want to send your drawings send them to realistified at bennyproductions.net. And then I guess that's it for today. If you like this video make sure to leave a like and a comment and if you enjoy my overall content feel very very free to subscribe that would actually mean the world to me. Then I hope I'll see you in my next video.